Page 233 is what we looked at last day. We said, look, in a Z-score table, if I'm using the tables, if I know the Z-score, I can tell you the area to the left of it or to the right of it. So if you want me to find the area to the left of something, I find it really helpful to do a small sketch. And then what I do is I uh, look this up on my Z-score table. If I want to find the area to the right of something, again, I do a small sketch. And we said if you want to find the area to the right of it, Sydney, it's one minus that particular area because the total area underneath the chart, underneath the curve is one, and the chart only gives you the areas to the left. Is there anybody that was away a couple of days ago and doesn't have one of those lovely bright orange Z-score charts? So what we looked at, uh, just for practice then, you should be able to go, is this gonna work? Let's try it again, Mr. Duick. Computer is thinking about things like crazy. Come on, computer, come on. Do that. Oh, I got a latecomer. Who have I got as my latecomer coming in here? So all of you right now, what if I asked you to find the probability that Z is to the left of 1.37? Now, there's no way I'm writing that anymore. How will I write that from now on? What's the first word there, Boston? I'll use the letter P. That of, little bracket, Z is less than to the left of 1.37. That's how we're gonna write it. Can you find that on your chart, please? And tell me what the answer is. Your orange sheet in front of you, like I asked you to get out about 30 seconds ago. And while you're doing that, I'll get my handy dandy Z score chart out. What did I say it was? 1.37? Hello, 1.37, there we go. So I go find positive 1.37. The probability that we're to the left of 1.37 is 91.47% uh, or 0.9147, is that correct? Yes? What I would probably do though, Joe, is I would probably do a little sketch like this. What's in the middle there? Zero. Because that would tell me, oh, 1.37 is over here somewhere. And I would say, I want that area. I find that little sketch helps a lot and it takes all of one second. That's why your Z-score chart, Danielle, at the very top of the page, has this picture. It's reminding you, hey, we take everything to the left of. What if I wanted to find the probability that Z was to the right of 0 0.68? That's going to be to the right up greater than. I said, Simon, an easy way to remember is the arrow kind of points in which direction you're going to write it on the chart. So if I was going to do my little diagram, there's 0. 0.67 is over here. We want this area here. How the heck do I find that from the chart? I can. If I want to find an area to the right, what do I do, Marcus? One minus, so I'm going to think to myself, self, this is going to be one minus 0.67 as an area. One minus 0 0.67, 0 0.67, 0 0.6, 0 0.67, 0 0.67, 0 0.67. One minus 0.7486. Which is what? Yeah, you'll need to get out your calculator and go. If you haven't signed out a graphing calculator, sign one out, please. Uh, 1 minus 0. 0.75 would be 0. 0.25, so it's going to be 0. 0.2, 0. 0.2514? No? No? 1 minus 0. 0.7486, oh, yeah, 0. 0.2514? Okay. Wouldn't I round, sorry? 
Uh, four decimal places, since that's what my chart has, I'll, I'll, I'll use their numbers and then I'll round off at the very, very end. Okay? Well, what if they wanted me to do this one? Yo. 0.68, I did this wrong? Oh, I went to 6.7 for some dumb reason. That's why people are confused. So 6... I, mm. No, it's not, Matt. It's all correct. Yeah. Learn to read the chart, Mr. Duick. Learn to read your writing, Mr. Duick. Thank you for pointing that out. What if I asked you to find this? The probability that we are between negative 0.21 and positive 0.21, and that's how I'm going to write it, because I don't want to write out the phrase, the probability that we are between negative 0.21 and positive, too much writing. Or as a diagram, we're doing this. There's zero, there's negative 0.21, there's positive 0.21, and I want this area. How do I find that? Well, here we said, find that area find that area and to find what's left what subtract what is 0.21.5822 minus what's negative 0.21 so point uh, three two and what's negative 0.21 sorry Marcus Point four one six eight. So the area between them has to be however big that is. Then the last thing, this is what we did last day. We said, all right, schmarty pants. What if instead I give you the picture and I tell you that the area was... 0.2843. What z-score did it come from? Now where are you looking on the chart? Well, now, Jeremiah, you're looking uh, at these numbers because it's an area. It's a decimal. Uh, what did I say I was looking for? 0.2843. What z-score did that come from? Negative 0.57? By the way, your calculators, I haven't showed you how yet, actually have the Z-score tables built in, and they will do all this for you. But in terms of speed, Boston, it's not much quicker. In fact, it's right about the same amount of speed as looking at the chart. So two classes from now, I will show you how to do all this on your calculator because I'm a techie nerd. But unlike standard deviation where it was a huge time saver to use the technology, it's about the same. So, going backwards is what we looked at last day. Now I can say, any questions? I added this then. Originally I'd assigned one, two, and three. I added number four, and I added number six. Any of these you want me to go over? Yep. Yeah. Number six? Did you try it? Okay. It says, the shaded area in the diagram represents 23.97% or as a decimal, 0.2397. They want me to find Z1. The problem is to find that, I need this whole area here. Right? Did you just see it by me drawing that area or arrow or not? Okay. Uh, did they give me that Z score? Oh. What's this area then? The non-shaded, but that's a Z score. Uh, what's what's the area to the left of negative 1.54? By the way, you guys are you guys okay reading the charts? It's very slow for me to bring up the digital chart. Is it okay if I just look to my actual physical chart and find it? Because it's way, way easier. Uh, what was it? Uh, negative 1.54, negative 1.5. 0.0618. So this area is 0.0618. So 
So here's my question. Taylor, what's the total area to the left of the mystery Z1? Those two combined. And that's what I'm going to look up to find Z1. So if I add those two together, point six, point zero six one eight, and point two three nine seven. What I'm really looking for is a Z score that has an area of point three zero one five. Which please tell me it's on my chart somewhere or close. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, negative point five two. No. Okay. I find drawing a little picture helps an awful lot. That's why the other day I also gave you this sheet here called calculating areas. Is there anybody who doesn't have this sheet that was away when I handed this out two days ago? Okay. Were there any from this handout, from this sheet, because I'll be asking you to hand it in today, were there any from here that you were going, I cannot, but, uh, oh, and uh, notice I rounded off to three decimal places, Natasha, like you were suggesting, because I was using software to make my answer key really quickly. So, for example, you might get 0.68437, which would, or sorry, 0 .8, 0 0.68837, it rounds off to the four. Yeah, um, I, I tend to round off on my last step, but never in my intermediate steps whenever possible. You guys got the uh, fixes? Any of these that you were going to holy smokes now, again, for these ones here, I would draw a little picture because once I can see this, I'm usually pretty good. Where the middle is zero, that positive put it to the right, negative put it to the left. Which way are we going, to the left or to the right? Look at the greater than, less than sign and figure it out. These are good? So I have for you a take-home quiz. So take-home quiz too. Uh, for some reason, I was on a Simpsons kick when I was typing these up. Anyways, uh, students in Mrs. Krabappel's class write a math test. These are their class averages. Sherry and Terry, of course, got the same. Uh, Ralph, 38. Poor Ralph. Millhouse, 67. Bart, 49. Ah, Bart. Wendell, 95%. Martin, 112%. Uder, 75. And Nelson, 35 Find the mean and the standard deviation. You'll need a graphing calculator for that, although you can do it by hand if you really want to. You want to make sure you get that one before you go home. Get that one done before you go home. Or you can download the software. Number two, Barney is hired by the Quickie Mart to sample the sugar content of Super Squishies. Find the mean and the standard deviation of the sugar content. So here's a frequency table. We've done a quiz just like that. This is just like quiz one that I gave back to you. It's the back page I want to talk about. Lisa receives a mark of 99% on her test. If the class average was 81 and the standard deviation was 12, what's her Z score? So this you don't need a graphing calculator for. This is where we're using the Z equals X minus mu over standard deviation, where I said to you, Joe, there's four variables. If I give you any three, I expect to be able to find the fourth one. And so number three, I'm asking you to find the Z score, which means I gave you all the other stuff. What am I asking you to find in number four? Read. So, same equation, but I'm asking you to find that, which must mean I've given you the Z score, the actual score in the standard deviation. What I'm asking you to find in number five. What letter is that in that little hang, uh, crazy formula there? Okay, asking you to find X. And what am I going to do to solve almost all of these? Cross multiply. Right, cross multiply. Unless I'm trying to find Z, because the Z's already by itself, but for the other ones, cross multiply and then get whatever it is by itself. That you don't need a graphing calculator for. You can finish that on your own, no problem, between now and Tuesday. Tuck that away for a moment, please. The data collection lab, what we looked at last day. If you want to get it out, please. Who was away last day and didn't get a copy of this sheet here? So hand in calculating areas. You guys are way better. I had to go ballistic on my block Ds. My block D's, maybe three kids had done this data collection idea. And once you've handed it in, part one of today's lesson, if you want to go to lesson five, problems involving the normal distribution, page 237, page 237.
Yes, Shay, we've just opened our books now. Marcus will turn to page 237 as well. I know you're being helpful to Dick, but... Oh, he's there! Whap! Right in the face. And, Adam, what we want to look at are some applications. Now, these numbers will be often made up so that you get fairly nice answers, but do you guys know how to find the mean and the standard deviation of a data set now? In real life, the numbers would be yuckier, but Courtney just as doable. Okay? Here's the first example. A light bulb manufacturer produces 35,000 light bulbs a year. From past data, they've done surveys of their customers or they've measured them in a room somewhere. They know that the lifetimes of the bulbs are normally distributed. They form this bell-shaped curve. And they have a mean life of 900 hours and a standard deviation of 50 hours. This is how, Taylor, you know these numbers are made up because there's no way it would work out to nice round number and nice round number, but that's okay. You know what? Let's write that down. The mean is 900. The standard deviation is 50. A says we're going to come back to that. Let's do C first because C is actually an easier question. C asks, determine the probability that a bulb selected at random will last less than 920 hours. Find the probability that a bulb will last less than 920. That's how I would write that. Okay. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this 920 into a Z score. I want to find the Z score that goes with 920. How am I going to do that? Hey, how about at the top of the page right here, you all write Z equals X minus mu all over standard deviation. Some of you are ready on your calculators. Uh, this is going to be the actual value, 920 minus, what was the mean? 900 divided by the standard deviation, 50. What's the Z score that goes with 920? 0.4? Positive or negative? It, where would I put that on this curve here? Well, what's in the middle? 0.4, how about right about there? And Sydney, they want it to last less than 920 or less than 0.4. Am I going, do I want the area to the left or to the right? Conveniently, less than and left even almost begin with the same two letters. Wow! That was just great. All right, what's that area? What's that probability? What's the percentage? Find it on your orange sheet, please. Howdy. Give me one second here. What is the probability that a bulb will last less than 920 hours. What do you find when you look at the Z score of 0 0.4? 0.40, right? 0 0.0, right? what? If you were a light bulb manufacturing company, would that be useful data to know what the odds are, what the probability is that your bulbs will last a certain amount? Actually, even better, eventually what we'll say is how long will the bottom 5% last? And that's what will make our extended warranty go tell. Because we can afford to replace 5%, but we can't afford to replace 7%. We'll do that in a second. Let's go back up to part A. Part A says, predict the percentage of light bulbs that will last between 825 and 875 hours. We want the probability that the bulb will last between 825 and 875 hours. By the way, Joe, if you write the smaller number and the bigger number, and you always put a less than sign on a less than sign, that's how you write it in between those two numbers. It's bigger than this and smaller than that. That's the definition of in between. You'll notice I didn't actually use the 920 to do the arithmetic. What did I do with this 920 over here? What did I do with this 920 over here? 
Did a 920 appear on my little sketch? What appeared on my little sketch? What's that point four called? And please be a Canadian when you say it. What's the Canadian? Oh, the Z score. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the Z score for 825. I'm going to find the Z score for 875. Do that. How do I do that? No. Do it. I'll write it up here, but you need to be able to do this on your own, so try it yourselves. I think you should get negative answers because the average was 900, and these are both below average, which meant negative. Yes? What'd you get for the first Z score? You have to now type, by the way, those of you that aren't actually trying this on your calculator, I guarantee you're gonna make dumb mistakes on the test. For example, many of you will go like this. Oh, uh, let's see, the Z score, that's gonna be 825 minus 900 divided by 0. 0.5, and you'll, you won't understand where that ni negative 975 came from and what mistake you made. What mistake did I make? Okay, that's why I'm telling you to practice this. Bracket, 825 minus 900, close bracket, divided by, not 0.5, Mr. Duick, divided by 50. I wrote it down wrong both times for some strange reason. The standard deviation is 50, not 0.5. Shania, what would you get for the first set score? Negative what? That sounds right. What'd you get for the second Z score? Negative 0.5? Okay. So if I draw this little shoop, what number's right here? Zero. So negative 0.5 would be about there. Negative 1.5 would be about there. And I want that area. How do I find that? Is, that? is that okay, Danielle? There's negative a half, there's negative one and a half, right? The bigger negatives as we move further to the left, although technically they're the smaller negatives, but we think of them as the bigger negatives. Because they... Marcus, is that a hand up or are you just adjusting number 93? You're, you're adjusting here number 93? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Number 94 is not a place, so just get them right there. You were sitting like, you were sitting like this. Oh, you were going to raise your hand, but you forgot partway through that you were going to, and it just continued on its own? Be afraid. Jordan, how am I going to do this? How do I find it in between? This is right from the calculating area sheet. We're trying to put it all together. Remember what we do? Did you do the calculating area sheet? You need to. It was a precursor to this lesson. How do I find the area between two z-scores? Subtract what? Now, all of you that didn't know how to do this, here's what you want to do with your pen or your pencil. Draw an arrow like that. Draw an arrow like that. It helps, I'm telling you. Yeah. Find that area. Good. Find the area to the left of negative 0.5. Zero point three zero eight five. Is that correct? Is it or not? Yep. Yeah. Now find the area to the left of negative one point five. Zero six six eight. Is that right or wrong? Getting no feedback here. Okay, those two areas are right. 
How can I find what's in between them? Right, Courtney? Long one minus short one would give me the little tail that's left. Yeah? Good, do it. You get 0. 0.2417? Hey! 0. 0.2417 or 24.17%. About one quarter of their bulbs will last in that area. Is that okay? How many bulbs do they make in one year? What did this question say, Jordan? 35,000. What percent will last between that and that? How many? That's what B is asking. Okay, smarty pants. How many bulbs is that exactly? Well, it's going to be 24.17% of 35,000. And now we go walking back to math eight percentages. How do I find 24.17% of 35,000? How do I find a percent of a number? First thing, I never do math with percents. I change it to a decimal. What is 24.17% as a decimal? 0.2417. What am I going to do with it and the 35,000? You're going to multiply. You want a dumb way to What's the word between those two numbers? Of means times. 99% of the time in math, of means times. It's not one of the common ones. Usually we say product or factor or say, yeah, but you know what, of, and if you don't believe me, 3 to the power of 4 means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, of sort of means times. So, how many bulbs? Round to the nearest bulb. Let's assume they don't sell half a light bulb. My mom says I'm half a light bulb. No, that's not what she means. And, and anyways, sorry? 8,461. 60? Sydney, would this be useful to you if you were manufacturing? Yeah. Okay. In fact, in the 1950s, there was a North American mathematician who was doing his graduate research in statistics. And he went to the big three car companies. He went to Ford and GM and American Motors, and he said, look, look, I can help you find your mistakes, your errors, your manufacturing defects coming off the assembly line, and I can help you catch them better. You don't even need to change your workers. Aaron, I can just make it so that mathematically you'll be more accurate in spotting where the mistakes come from. I'm telling you, this will work. And the American Motor Company said, not interested. So he went to a different country. You know what country he went to, which suddenly rocketed to the top of the world in car manufacturing? Japan. And the reason why Japanese cars were, for decades, better made than North American cars was not that they were better made in the factory. Mathematically, they were better at catching the mistakes. Much better. Dumb Americans. Example two. Okay. A study showed that the mean duration of a certain strain of flu virus was 12 days. Jeremiah just got the flu. Looks sick. And the average, Jeremiah, the average person with your strain of the flu is sick for 12 days, your doctor tells you. But you've Googled and you've also found that, oh, and the standard deviation is three days. And you're kind of wondering, what are the odds, uh, how, how long are you going to be sick? Maybe you've got a vacation coming up and you're wondering if it's worth canceling your plane tickets or whether there's a good chance that you might be healthy by then. Make sense? Let's find out. If the data is normally distributed and you caught this strain of the flu virus, find the probability that it would last longer than 17 days. So let's suppose that you're going on a plane trip 17 days from now and you just caught the flu today and you're trying to decide, is it worth me canceling? If I cancel my tickets, I gotta pay a fine. They always make you pay a fine. But if I'm sick and I can't go, then I lose all the money. What's my best strategy? 
Courtney, what did it say the mean was? Yes, let's write that down because we feel better. And Courtney, did it give me the standard deviation? Woohoo! And they want me to find the probability that we're sick more than, greater than, 17 days. Is that clear if I write it like that and clue in pre stands for, P stands for probability that we're sick more than 17 days? Is that a short enough way to write it and still be clear? Okay. I'm not going to use the 17. What am I going to do with that 17? I'm going to find its Z score. So all of you, find the Z score that goes with 17 for this data. Which is going to be 17 minus 12 divided by 3. It's 5 divided by 3. You get 1.6666666, so 1.67. I'll put a little sketch. I already got a little sketch. What number is right here? So where's the 1.67 going to go? To the left or to the right? To the right, how about right about there-ish? And it says we want to find the odds of being sick for longer than that, so we actually want this area, which I can't find from my chart. My chart is going to give me that area, that probability, that percentage. Well, if I can find that, how can I find the right-hand tail? What about minus? One minus that. Yeah, okay. Uh, find uh, the area that goes with 0.167. By the way, I find it really helpful and not much work to draw the arrow, and I write the actual percentage right above the arrow, like on the line. So what it, what goes with 1.67? 0.95. What am I going to do with this? 1 minus 0.9525. Running out of room here. Answer. What are the odds that Jeremiah is sick for longer than 17 days? 0. 0.0. Sorry? 475. Jeremiah, you got about a 5% chance of being sick for your vacation. That might help you decide whether it's worth paying the 50 bucks and canceling your flight, or, ah, eh, I got a 95% chance of being healthy. I'm going to gamble and keep my flight and hope optimistically I can go. Make sense? Hey, uh, Jeremiah, what if you were sick for only nine days? What would that tell you? It tells you your immune system is better than the mean, better than average. That might also be nice to know. Or... You're a hospital, you're a flu vaccination company. And you're trying to decide how many hospital beds, maybe this is a really bad strain of the flu and especially seniors are going to be hospitalized. And you're kind of wondering how many hospital beds you should reserve. After 13 or 15 days, what percent of the population is still going to be sick? How many hospital beds should you reserve? You could use that to figure that out. B says between, we want... The probability that between 13 and 15 days, we're sick. What am I going to do with this 13 and this 15? Find a Z score. So find the z-score that goes with 13, find the z-score that goes with 15. What was the mean? 12? Again, make sure you're finding the z-score, not just copying off me, because you need to know how to find the z-score. And if you don't know how to find a z-score, you want to come in for help. 
I think we're on the same question, right? So it's going to be 13 minus 12 all over, what was the standard deviation? Three? 0.33, I think if my math is right. And it's going to be 15 minus 12. Do you get 0.33 and 1.000? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll quickly label my diagram. Alex, what number is right in the middle here? No. Zero. So I think 0.33 right about there. One right about there. And we want that area. That percentage. That probability because they're all the same thing. How can I find that? I think Alex is going to be this minus that. So all of you, try finding this on your own. I'll slowly fill in the numbers up here, but see if you can figure out this one on your own. Uh, what goes with one point? Uh, where's one? There it is, one point. Nine. I don't know. How would you, f if this whole line is 0.8413 long and this line is 0.6293, how would you find this tiny chunk? Can you figure it out? Right? That's what, well, by the way, that's why I draw that line because then it, to me it becomes almost obvious. Oh, long line minus short line gives you little tail. Even though it's an area, I think of it as a length. getting used to this new calculator. You get 0.212? Or, as a percentage, 21.2%. Turn the page. How many of you ever bought an electronic device of some type? Did they offer to sell you a warranty? How do they know how much they can afford to warranty? And the answer is like this. Again, Binder, these are made up numbers, but you'll get the principle. From, expensive, from extensive testing, an appliance distribution company knows that the average life of toasty toasters is 4.2 years. How are they figure that out? Here we go to Ikea, where they have those chairs that are being pressed on constantly, 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 constantly to simulate wear and tear in like two weeks, what you would do over one year, they would have done the same thing with the toasters. They probably would have pushed it down, let it pop, push it down, let it pop, push it down, let it pop. Done that a bunch of times and then said, on average, people push it down three times a day, times 365 years, uh, days in a year, times how many push down and pops you get out of it. Okay? So they didn't wait for 4.2 years. They would have done some kind of research. Anyways, they know that their average toaster lasts that long with a standard deviation to that. And they know that the data is normally distributed, so it looks like this. The company is going to offer a warranty, but they can only afford to replace the worst 8%. This is an area. What warranty to the nearest year should the company offer? So this is what we've been doing, but going backwards. Up until now, they gave us the data value. We found a Z-score, found the area. You hear what I just said? We're going to go backwards with the area, find the Z-score, find the X. Don't write this down. What area is exactly half? You should know this right away. What? 0.50, 50%. What area did they give me? 8% or 0 0.08? I think that would be like way over here somewhere. There's a Z score that has an area of 0 0.08. You see how I kind of put that together? 
Good, find it from your chart. Now you're, now you're not looking at Zs in the columns. You're, you're not looking down the sides. You're looking for a decimal of 0 0.0 as somewhere in your Z score chart, 0 0.08. 0 0.06, 0 0.0823, point, hmm. You know what? I think we're going to, is it right here? Right around what, negative 1.4 ish? Yes? I'm, I'm going to use negative 1.40. There isn't a bang on one, but I think this one's, this will do. Negative 1.40. You okay with that, Danielle? Yeah? So the Z score is negative 1.40. What did the question say the mean was? Alex, what did the question say the mean was? Read. 4.2. What did the question say the standard deviation was? And we know the Z score was negative 1.40. We would like to find the actual score, which we use the letter X for. Hey, which equation am I going to pull out now? Did we all did you all just turn the page? Yeah. Then how about at the top of the page, really cleverly, we write Z equals X minus mu all over standard deviation. But what Boston? So I'm going to write x equals, and I'm going to start plugging in numbers. What's z? Negative 1.40 equals mystery x, I don't know, minus mu 4.2 all over the standard deviation of 0.65. Did you say cross multiply? You're right. By the way, what's underneath here? It's invisible. So it's going to be this times this equals this times 1, which really is just going to end up being 0.65. It's going to end up being negative 1.4 times 0.65, or 0.65 times negative 1.4, Shania, whichever one you wrote first, equals x minus point, sorry, 4.2. Adam, see the x? How do I get the x by itself? How do I move this over? What's in front of the 4.2? Ah, yeah, right, always doing the opposite. So we don't need to guess, not divide it. Uh, for sure, add it. x is going to be negative 1.4 times 0.65 plus 4.2. How many years can we offer our warranty at? Oh, and then it says to the nearest year, so let's round off, because you're not going to offer a 3.6 year warranty or a 1.7 year warranty. You're either going to offer a one year or a two year. Sorry? 3 point what? 3.29. And by the way, even if it was 3.8, you think the company would round down or round up? Because if they round up, they can't afford to replace 8.1%. They, they can't afford to replace that extra smidge. And they got, I mean, they got to make a profit, right? So 3.2 or 3 years. We can offer a 3-year warranty and still make a profit if we budgeted this. By the way, who pays for the replacements? No. You guys do. They now would raise the price on every single toaster by about three or four cents. They would know exactly how much to raise the price on all those toasters. We all pay for each other's warranty. The price is spread out among us. The company doesn't pay for it. They got to make money. So last year, sorry, two years ago, I bought my first ever brand new car. It's a 2010 Hyundai. Here in Canada, it's got a full bumper to bumper warranty of five years or uh, 100,000 kilometers, I think it is. A five-year warranty. Ah, but Joe, in the U.S., it's got a 10-year warranty. So one of the reasons I bought it is I figured, well, if Hyundai is willing to offer a 10-year warranty in the U.S., whatever mean and standard deviation that they've done for their defects, it's got to be way above five years. 
it's got, I probably got some good breathing room. Otherwise, there's no way they would have offered in the U.S. a 10-year warranty. You could afford to. Really? You can use this to make like purchasing decisions? Yeah. We're going to pause here. I, you know what, though? I generally, because I don't want to do all this crunching, I'll almost always go to Amazon or somewhere where people have bought several hundred of them, and there's a lots of lots of reviews, and you'll find out very quickly if there's flaws or defects. It's a better way because that because although the math works, maybe we're using it in a way that they didn't think of when they were testing it. Okay, well then the math is useless, right? Homework, take home quiz for sure, and you should be able to do number one, number two, number three. And number four, yes, photo radar, they estimate how many tickets people will get and they budget that into their provincial budget. Okay, so take home quiz, one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna be coming around shortly to check on lessons three and four. Some of you still have to show me lessons one and two. If you do not have lessons one, two, three, and four done today, then you'll be telling me you're going to show them to me on Tuesday or you want to stick around Tuesday last block after school and finish them. Oh, along with the calculating areas sheet and the uh, math lab. Stop.